Hi, my name is Arya, and I'm from a very small village in India. I was born on a dark, stormy night on Friday the 13th, which isn't a big deal except when your parents are crazy superstitious. Instead of letting out my first cry, I made some spit bubbles and giggled. This child is weird. Why isn't she crying? Look at her devilish smile. Once when I was two, I was playing with my grandmother and it was the first time I called out her name, Dadi. But it wasn't a celebration because the same day, she passed away. A few months later, when I learned to say my grandpa's name, Dada, he passed away too. Oh my god, this is the beginning to an end. If she says another word, she might kill us all. And the very same day, my uncles and aunts left the village with their entire families. And my parents just got weirder and crazier. I loved the color black, but they thought it was demonic. So they'd paint all my favorite black things pink. One time when I was five, I rescued a cute black cat from the streets and brought her home. I named her Kali, but my parents went ballistic. Black cats are evil. They'll bring death upon us. But he's my little Meow Meow. The only thing that could kill us is his cuteness. They didn't listen to a word I said and threw Kelly out of the house that night. And I was furious. I started screaming at the top of my lungs. And just then, there was a loud clap of thunder, followed by a loud bang. My parents looked out the window in horror to see an ancient sacred tree struck down by lightning. Mom turned as pale as paper, and Dad started praying to all 33 million gods. We're sorry. Please forgive us. We've been really, really bad. Yes. We're going to bring your precious little Callie back right now. They immediately dashed out of the house and came back with Callie at three in the morning. The very next day, they woke me up at five in the morning and took me to see my aunt, who lived in a far off village. When we got there, a woman dressed in black clothes came out. That's your aunt. Go hug her. She's just like you. I got off reluctantly, but before I'd even reached my aunt, mom and dad were gone. They just left me there. I was about to burst into tears, but my aunt gently took my hand. And when I went inside, my jaw dropped. The entire house was full of black ornaments and decorations. This place was heaven. You don't have to worry about anything, love. I'll take care of you from now on. For days, I thought my parents would come back for me, but they never did. And I didn't even mind because unlike them, my aunt adored me. She was a tarot card reader, but she never taught me any of it. Instead, she put me in school. When I went to school on the first day, I was in for a surprise. It was an empty piece of land with cows and buffaloes grazing there. Oh, I'm so sorry, darling. I thought they had a building around here somewhere. Don't worry, I'll teach you at home. Well, she did teach me a couple of things, but none of them were useful. Once when I was 13, I was playing in a field with the neighborhood kids when suddenly one of them got bit by a snake. Everyone started screaming and running around in panic. Just then, a man came and decided to take him to the temple instead of the hospital. What are you, crazy? He needs to go to a doctor right now. Are you out of your mind? God will heal him. Ah, this was nuts, but I wasn't gonna back off that easily. I bit him hard on his hand and he started screaming. This girl is crazy. She bit me. She bit me. Uh, I need to go to a doctor. No, you don't. God will heal you. Let's take you to the temple. He immediately backed off and someone called the doctor and the boy's life was saved. But strange rumors about me spread through the entire village. And this stupid girl, Maya, she was the biggest gossip of them all. She's evil. She can talk to snakes. She's possessed. She tried to eat a man alive in front of my eyes. Oh yeah? Then you better stay away unless you want to get hurt. Well, it was fun scaring these silly kids away, but Maya wasn't one to be scared easily. She had this habit of picking on other people for no good reason. One time, when I was swimming in the lake by the jungle, she came along with her minions and grabbed all my clothes. Let's see you transform into a snake now, Anaconda. Hey, are you crazy? Give me my clothes back but they just ran away with them. OMG, what was I gonna do now? Make a gown out of leaves? Well, it wasn't such a bad idea, but I was furious at Maya. I had to take my revenge. One day, I saw her making out with a guy behind a barn, and I just knew what I had to do. 
I picked a huge chunk of cow dung lying on the ground, made a ball out of it, and threw it at her. Ew, gross, who did that? Come out this instant. The guy who was with her ran away with the speed of a bullet, but Maya looked raging mad. As I was tiptoeing away, I accidentally stepped on a thorn and screamed out loud. You, you witch, I knew it was you, you evil witch. You're so gone today. And do you think I'll spare you? Then she picked a chunk of cow dung and we broke out into a massive fight. But just as I was about to throw a huge chunk right in her face, she screamed. No, not my face. I can't afford to get pimples. It's my wedding in two weeks. What? Wedding? But she was just 14. For a second, I thought she was bluffing, but no, she was actually getting married. In fact, her parents were going crazy, boasting about her grand wedding all through the village. And Maya, she was getting all the attention she craved for. But this was crazy. She was just a kid. On the day of her engagement, my aunt took me to the party. When all the people left, I saw Maya crying all alone. Something was wrong. Maya, are you okay? Get off me, witch. I don't want your sympathy. It's bad enough I'm getting married without my will. Just go away. But, but you looked so happy, and you always tell everyone how excited you are. I lie, because I don't have an option. That's just how things are done here, okay? But a dummy like you would never understand. Go away, for God's sake. This was so wrong. Even though I didn't like her that much, there was no way I was going to let it happen. I had to do something. So I decided I was going to kidnap the groom and lock him up in a room. After all, it wasn't just about one girl. It was about all the young kids in the village and their future. On the night of the wedding ceremony, I snuck into the venue. But just then, I tripped over something and crashed into the pole, holding the weight of the entire tent. The tent came crashing down, and within seconds, everything caught fire. People started running around like crazy. And just then, Maya came out screaming. I thought she'd thank me for saving her life, but she attacked me instead. You ruined my wedding, you witch. I had been preparing it for weeks. What? Something was really wrong with my ears. Her thank you sounded more like, I'm gonna kill you, witch. Suddenly, a man came rushing in and said, The crops, they're, they're burning. The fire has spread to the fields. We're all ruined. OMG, what was it now? All of this because of a stupid tripping incident? But instead of running to the crop fields, everyone looked at me in shock, and I knew that look too well. I was so doomed. I ran home to save my butt and locked all the doors and windows. Just then my aunt came running. What's wrong? What happened? Who's knocking like a mad dog on the door? No, don't open that! There were angry villagers chanting outside that they wanted to throw me out of the village this instant. She's the devil. She put our crops on fire. We can't let her live with us anymore. What? It was all a freaking mistake. Why were they acting this crazy? For the first time, I felt so bad and almost burst into tears. My aunt hugged me tight and said, Don't worry, my child. I got this. She went out and told the villagers that I had already fled from the village, but the villagers wouldn't believe her. They stayed outside my house day and night until they were sure that I'd actually left. My aunt kept me hidden inside the house for months until one day I heard that there was a serious illness spreading all through the nearby villages. Auntie, I'm so scared. What's gonna happen? I have no idea, Arya, but no matter what, Promise me, you won't step outside of the house. Well, I did as she asked, but then one day, she also fell seriously ill, and I had no choice but to leave the house to get her medicine. But as soon as the villagers oh. saw me, their faces turned pale white. They were running away from me and screaming at the top of their lungs. She's back! She's back! The devil is back! She's brought a new plague with her to kill us all this time! What? Why were they all so freaking dumb? But I didn't care. I had something more important to do. I rushed to the hospital, but as soon as I got there, even the doctors looked at me in shock. What? Did they also think I was a freak? A doctor called me and asked why I had no red dots on my body like everyone else. Well, I bathe daily. I guess that's why. He looked at me mm. confused, but then they conducted a whole lot of tests on me. I was all freaked out. Why were they doing all this? I wasn't some freaking alien. 
Moments later, the nurse came out and screamed, You were right, sir. She's the one. The one? What the one? It turned out they found the antibodies to the disease in my blood. Apparently, my blood was now the cure to the deadly disease that was spreading, and I could save everyone's life. When everyone recovered, the doctors told all the villagers that it was me who saved lives. Everyone looked shocked at first, but then they started screaming. Goddess! Goddess! She's a goddess! She saved our lives! People started coming to me with gifts and presents. It was all so crazy. For God's sake, what was wrong with these people? No, stop it, please. I'm no goddess, and neither am I the devil. I'm just a normal human being like you people. It was just a stroke of luck that my blood had the cure. For the first time, I felt the people were actually listening to me. If you really want to give me something, then please stop with these stupid superstitions and abolish all the age-old rules that are ruining our kids' lives and their futures. We don't need that. We need schools and facilities and better hospitals so that more lives can be saved. After that, there was a long silence, and I was all ready to sneak my butt out of that place in case they got mad at me again. But thankfully, they understood. After that, I left the village to go to school and study more about science and medicine. And I was appointed the new chief of the village. 